Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how we're going to use the Revolve, or not the Revolve, the Pattern tool. Um, and I'm also going to show you guys some other kind of more advanced sketching tools too. So we're going to use, make something like this. So I've got a wheel that's symmetric with the cutouts all um, being concentric around the same point. So to start, let's make a canvas that we can work on. I'm going to create a sketch on the front face. And I'm just going to make some circle. Again, I'm not too worried about the dimensions right now. And I'll make a little circle in the middle too. And we'll go ahead and extrude that like that. So we've got a canvas we're going to work on. Let's talk real quick about the patterning tools. So there are three of them, four of them if you count pattern on path. Um, so we've got rectangular pattern, circular pattern, pattern on path, and then mirror. Um, so you can read what they do. Basically, we can take a single feature and repeat it. So rectangular pattern, think like a Lego block. Um, what we could do with that is if we have a cylinder that's sticking up out of a rectangle, we could pattern that cylinder um, as many times in either direction as we want to you know, make the pegs that are on a Lego. Circular pattern then um, is going to be what we use for the cutouts on our wheel. Now there are patterning tools in the create menu as well as the sketch menu, and I'll show you both. Lastly, mirror is for um, creating you know, mirror objects of something across a plane. Um, to use mirror, you do need to have a construction plane, and we'll talk about that as well. So let's see how we can make these cutouts, and we're going to use some more advanced sketching tools than we've used in the past. So I'm going to create a sketch on this plane, and to start, what I'm going to do is make myself a work area of just two big arcs, and these are going to serve as the top and bottom of my cutout. So back on here, it's going to be this top curve and this bottom curve. And I'm only going to make one of these. So next, I'm going to make a line that's straight up from the origin, perfectly vertical. And I'm going to make that a construction line. So remember, a construction line is just something that it won't actually extrude from. Um, instead, what it'll do is it's just there for reference that we can dimension to. So you can do it up through the origin like that um, so that it is perfectly on the axis. Um, otherwise, I'll show you guys a trick here um, that works a little differently. So first I can click here. Since I'm offset, I believe I can say coincident making that line on that origin. And now it's perfectly vertical. All right, so next, I'm going to make just two angled lines to separate this off. Now how it's made right now, it's not exactly centered in any way, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this circle smaller circle dimension. I want to shrink this a little, Let's make it 1.2 inches. That's just based on my scale, I just wanted it smaller. Um, I'm going to give this circle dimension too, that looks fine. And then I'm going to use the trim tool. So what this does is it can remove sections of the line that you don't want to keep. So like I don't want this outside of the circle, I don't want that one. And then I can press escape and we're good. So now if you notice, we're getting closer, but we're not exactly centered on anything, right? I can still move each of these points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the midpoint constraint. I'm going to click on this point and that arc. So from that point, I'm going to make this use this triangle button, the midpoint right there. And I'm going to do the same thing on top. And what this is going to do is make it symmetric between. So now when I click and drag one, they move together. The other tool you could use is the symmetric tool or the symmetry tool to make one line symmetric about the other. You could have also actually mirrored this line too, but I think that's making it more complicated than needed. So it behaves how I want. It's all symmetric. Um, we can add dimensions too, I suppose, if we gave this line a height and we gave it a width. Now it's fully dimensioned. So let's look at the pattern tools. Like I said, in the sketch, um, there are mirror, circular, and pattern tools. I don't like using them in the sketch. I would rather pattern and extrusion, um, but it's up to you on how you do it. So you could do a circular pattern here. I can pick my objects, so just all of the lines that I want to pattern, right? I could do those. You can do the construction line if you want to as well. I have to pick a center point, so that would be right there, and then just pick how many 
you want to appear. And then it'll automatically make them all. And then if I change the dimensions of one, say I make this six, it'll change the dimensions of all of them. All right, this line's not construction. There we go. So like I said, I like to do it instead in the extrude menu. So I'm gonna, or the pattern menu, like through that create. So I'm going to extrude this and I'm going to cut it all away. So there's one. So now I'm gonna use the circular pattern tool and I'm going to pattern, instead of the faces, I always like to pattern features. So then what I can select is down in my timeline, I can pattern that extrusion. Now instead of a point, since we're working three dimensions, I need to pattern around an axis and so if they don't show up, remember you can turn on your origin here by clicking the eye. And I want to pattern around that axis. Let's make it five so it matches the example I showed. Press OK. There's my part. So let's talk very quickly about rectangular pattern. So let me make a quick box with cylinders on it, or a cylinder on it. And then we can see how the rectangular pattern tool could be used. Imagine we're making a little Lego. So for me, it's right there in the create menu as a shortcut. Um, it might be down here for you. We can do a rectangular pattern. And you can pick, again, uh, I would pick a feature being, you know, for me, it's that cylinder, maybe it's an extrude. You can pick the directions you want it to go in. So maybe along that line and that line. And then you just pick how you want to. So extent is the entire distance. So like say you wanted three of them over two inches. Spacing is saying I want them all to be half an inch apart. So if I specified here 0 0.5, they're all half an inch apart now. Whereas if I did extent and I did 0 0.5, it's going to fit all three of them within that 0 0.5 inch distance. And you need to specify that for both uh, your quantity and numbers for both. So you can see how I can get more. So let's bump it up. You can see kind of how it would make that Lego type feature. So next let's talk about the mirror tool. So imagine we've got some object on this side and we've made it we've made it once and it's extremely complicated and we don't want to have to recreate it again on the other side because it's just an odd shape and you know making all that effort is going to be a pain if something changes and we have to change it again we can use the mirror tool so let's look and see what it says it says make a mirrored copy of selected faces features bodies or components at equal distances across a plane select an object to mirror and a plane to mirror around so if we want this to show up on this side uh, what we have to do first is make a mirror plane. So in the construct menu, we can select mid planes. You can do an offset plane if you know your sizes, but a mid plane will give you a plane perfectly in the middle. So I'm going to do a mid plane between this face and this face. And if you look, I have this new plane, one of those orange boxes, perfectly in the middle. Slices it right in half. So anything I make now with my mirror tool, I can then reflect it onto the other side. So I can go into create, go into mirror, pattern type. Remember, I like to do features, but you can mirror all kinds of different things. I'm going to mirror that extrusion. It already selected my mirror plane for me. Press OK, and now it's on both sides. So the other awesome thing about using mirror instead of recreating it again is let's say I suddenly had to change this because I found out my dimensions were incorrect on it. So let's make it, it's supposed to be that shape instead. When I hit finish sketch, it automatically will update on both sides. So that's using circular pattern, mirror, and rectangular pattern. Remember, you can do it all in the sketch menu as well. Thanks.